Yeah, Christopher is, is becoming a subject matter expert in, in NDEs. And, and so um, I knew that you would I knew that you would pick up on that and, and like that. How did you feel? Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, how did you f physically feel when you came out of that NDE experience? Like immediately after, let's say the next day, the next 24, what were they like the next 24 hours for you physically and emotionally? Did you know you went through something like that? Or what did your body tell you? What's your body? How was your body feeling? Um, well, what I remember about it was that we didn't have cell phones at the time. Right. Yeah. And so I called my parents from the, the house phone there and my mom, I don't even remember what she said, but I know I was delirious, you know? Hmm. And so, and it was, you know, so I get up and I, I walk out the front door and I'm like struggling. It's hard to walk. I remember being really dizzy and kind of fatigued. Yeah. And um, I think I was really hungry too. Um, hmm. But I can't, I can't remember exactly. But I do know that I was, I could barely walk around. I was like delirious. Uh, I had a friend who, um, I think, I think when I, I think some of the people that were at the house were asking me not to leave. Don't leave. So don't, 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 because they, they knew something had happened to me. Yeah. And, um, but I left anyway, cause I was, like, <laughs> I was terrified. And, yeah. um, one of my friends came and, and met me as I'm walking to try to get home. And he, um, he walks with me and he helps me get up to my house and he, nice. and so my, my mom, um, I remember kind of going, being taken to my bedroom. I remember, um, a, a, a Methodist pastor, her pastor, coming and praying for me. Um, and it was like in and out of kind of sleep awake that I saw that. What and was your um, mother's reaction to that? Seeing you like this? Just, I, I, I don't really remember her to, except for like sad, you know, like yeah. what have you done to yourself? Kind of sad. And then getting the, the minister, the pastor to come pray for me. Cause sure. she doesn't know what else to do, you know? Um, and then going to, the MUSC facility. I just remember kind of, um, I remember them taking me in kindly, yeah. but being very, very cold and clinical about me leaving, you know? I gotcha. So, yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. So, all right. So, you know, obviously, wow. Holy moly. And so how in the world you, so you decide to go in the Navy, you get waivers to go in the Navy, you're in the Navy. You're obviously a very intelligent guy. Um, but you've had, you've lived some life as many of the people, most people don't realize, you know, I, I remember when I was in uh, boot camp, you know, I was at uh, like 5 a.m. day one of boot camp <laughs> and everything goes chaotic and crazy and it doesn't really calm down for a while. However, the amazing thing is you start to get to know all these different people that are in your in your company and you're you're like wow i never met anybody like that 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 never knew anybody from there never knew anybody from there never knew anybody from there you know and so it's yeah. this really wild diverse experience where it's a melting pot you're thrown yeah. in and you have to get along and everything is about compliance um they break you down from from your personal self to your Navy self or your Army self or your Marine Corps self or your Air Force self, Coast Guard self, um, you know, or Air Force self, all of that. I think they bring them lattes in the Air Force, though. Like nothing gets started. I don't think there's a lot of yelling. I don't think anybody raises their voice. I'm just kidding. You know, the Air Force is the best. Anyway, so so you're in this experience and then you you get through boot camp, you get through your A school, which is a very difficult A school. Um, and you get to your command, which is Camp Pendleton in California, and, and here you are. How do you get from the Navy? How do you transition from the Navy out of the Navy? What, yeah. what happens? So, I again, um, I wanted to go see the world, and I didn't. ended up being – went to San Diego for my A school, and then I mm -hmm. went to C school at, at Camp Pendleton, uh, Field Medical Service School, and I got immediately uh, stationed – um, at 13 area headquarters, uh, the battalion and, uh, just my, my entire military career was pretty much there. 
Mm-hmm. And um, very anesthetic, very boring experience for me as far as the military um, because I really had a different thought, you know. But anyway, I uh, while I'm in, the anthrax vaccination comes out right. because we're, right. we're dealing with anthrax and, and it was experimental. And I and I was in some uh, some chats where there was a question about the efficacy and the, you know, the contents mm-hmm. and the, and the things that would happen to people who took the vaccine. And so could, did you hear that dinging sound? No, no. Good. Okay, good. I'm making sure I didn't have it. Cause my, I, you know, I got a mixer here. <laughs> nah, no worries. But, uh, no worries at all. Okay, great, great. So I, um, you know, I take two looks at this vaccine. And I'm like, this is an experimental vaccination. People are having uh, adverse reactions. I don't want it. I'm not doing that. And yeah. I'm told you have to, you know, you have to. It's not optional. You, you, you signed the, the dotted line. You gave your body to the United States government. Therefore, we're going to do to it whatever we, I mean, no, I'm not, I, I'm not taking that. You're not putting an experimental vaccine in me. It's not, it's not even close to what we've taken as far as vaccinations is concerned. This is completely yeah. experimental. Um, I'm not doing it. And so um, they used threat, force, intimidation. They, they told me they were giving me a big chicken dinner. For all those who are not military, that's a bad conduct discharge yeah. uh, if I didn't take it. Put me under extreme pressure. It's, it was a, a, a three-shot series. I sure. ended up succumbing and taking one shot, and I wouldn't take any more. I lost all respect for my command and those that were in charge of me. I, I felt like um, I was already kind of disappointed because I thought it was going to be like, you know, really regimented, disciplined. Everybody's getting sharp and squared away, and, and it was like high school. A lot of gray yeah. area, a lot of politics. I mean, yeah. and so anyway, um, I, I really lost a lot of respect for my, my superiors. I became what they call a discipline problem. And um, they offered me an administrative discharge, a general under honorable conditions. And I was more than happy to take it because they, I mean, truly, they had tried to force me to take an experimental vaccination. And turns out, 2004, fast forward, uh, some, I think, Air Force guys, challenged the DOD in court, they won. Yeah. Military uh, members have a right to inform consent. They have and a not right only to that, they found that the anthrax vaccine doesn't protect you against anthrax. It just makes you sick for a very long time. And there was so know? many folks that had adverse reactions, you know, and so I, I was, I was, you know, I feel justified now, but it did not help sure. my, my, my overall um life experience going through that i, I really you trust the government <laughs> yeah <laughs> please yeah. right you know and that that's kind of my that's where i've been since then i, I became kind of apolitical and and even when i when i met jesus finally met jesus i was like i'm we'll just preach the gospel and that'll change people's hearts it'll change how they vote you know i don't need any of that government political thing so how but did it, you meet jesus how did you how how did what was the catalyst to you coming to faith? You truly connecting and saying, God, I want you to not be in my life. I want you to be my life. And anybody that's ever met you knows that's your deal. That's what you're about. Yeah. Um, you know, I was still like I was playing in bands. I, you know, I had a, a hatred of a God I never even asked anything you know it's just you know i I wrote really really rough metal songs like one of my songs example is go on sell forever sell your lies they all keep you waiting anticipating they make you love to watch you crawl they all keep you waiting anticipating go on that that was my attitude towards god and and um we would play in you know bars and dives and stages across the southeast and um you know, I, I still doing some drugs, coke and, and weed and stuff. And I ended up like having um, uh, my mind out. I thought I was losing my mind. I, and I had this really bad experience. We were in Athens, Georgia. We were at this party we were going to play. And and um, it was like this terror was in the woods. I don't know why I felt like it, like the like the devil himself was showing up. And mm. I felt so, so much terror. I was like, we have to leave. And I convinced my band to leave this party that we were supposed to participate in and um i because of that terror and i and i and i didn't tell you something i forgot about it the other day 
one of the things that led to that terror was prior to that show, there was a red shifted blood moon. Hmm. I, I lived on the beach most of my life. I had moved to Columbia and I had never experienced a red shifted blood moon in person. Hmm. That sounds strange to all of you guys who didn't live on the beach, but for me, it was very new. And I remember my mother saying that before that great and terrible day of the Lord comes, you know, the moon will turn to blood. And so I was all my young life. I was looking at the moon, waiting for it to turn to blood. Cause I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> when I see that, I know it's time. Oh, it's time's up. Yeah. And I saw that blood shifted moon. I had this terrific disaster of an experience at this uh, show in Athens. And I grabbed my Bible. I read it from cover to cover, like a storybook. So hmm. I, I it was like, okay. And I had all these things to say about God. The one who came and said he was him and actually came in flesh. I knew that much that he said he was him. I never mm-hmm. read what he had to say about it. And so I read it from cover to cover. Truly, it was like, I'm I'm going to be exiled. I deserve mm-hmm. death. I'm going to be destroyed all the way through the Old Testament until I got to the book of Isaiah. When I got to the book of Isaiah, it was like, praise be to God, like a breath of fresh air. It was so good. Yeah. <laughs> I got uh, Isaiah 49, 24, 25 is uh, something to the effect of, um, you know, shall the prey be taken from the mighty to the lawful captive, the captive who is in prison because of reasons that he did something wrong, the lawful yeah. captive, not, not kidnapped. Shall he go free? Yes. Yeah. I will take this prey from the mighty and, and deliver the captive and I will save your children. And I was like, that's me. I want that. And I believe that God could do that for me. And I kept reading. I got to the new Testament. And I saw Jesus. And that was the person that I had the friend that I wanted my whole life was this person, Jesus. The teacher mm. that I had wanted my whole life was this person. That, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, man, I'm like, like literally uh, getting broken hearted. And And um, in the midst of that whole experience, uh, in, I lived in a place called Forest Acres, and there were like trees over the, uh, the home we lived in. And these trees, they have branches. And the branches, when they get waterlogged, some of the dead branches... Will break off and fall out of the tree right and so after a storm sometimes you'll have like pine tree limbs everywhere big big old limbs well i'm in the middle of the storm and there is like me, me and my i still i'm still in the band we're still playing shows at bars with people who hate god too and um there is these tree limbs falling all over my roof doo, 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 doo. and i'm like having this just crazy terrific disaster of an experience spiritual experience and i get to this particular verse in the book of Mark, I, th- I want to tell you it's 13, Mark chapter 13, verse 36 or something, 35. Um, but it says that the Lord is like a man who went to a far country and he commanded his porter to watch. Okay? And while I'm reading the Bible, I was told you'll find yourself if you read the Bible. Yeah. And so I'm really looking for my name in there because I'm thinking really I'll find myself. Right? And I get to Porter and my family, my, wa- my mom's last name is Porter. And hmm. commands his porter to watch, and it says, "So watch," I say, and it says it's got colons and a colon, excuse me, and a capital W. Watch, hmm. and as soon as I get to that verse, the lights in my house go off, and I'm sitting under one lamp. There's one lamp over the top of my head, and that lamp that I'm using to read by at like two or three o'clock in the morning comes on half power while I'm reading the word watch. So I'm like, "Oh my god, this is crazy." <laughs> Thank you for watching this segment from our live show. We are live every night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, except for the Sabbath period. See you soon.